Well, welcome to the Lawson Tama Stadium here in Honiara, the Solomon Islands, the venue for the Oceania Nations Cup. And Gordon Watson's with me here. Gordon, how exciting is it to be here? Oh, look, it's, it's a thrill to be in Honiara. It's a football country, uh, the Solomon Islands. It's got a great tradition of producing wonderful players and it plays host to a, a, a tournament that will determine possibly the FIFA World Cup qualifier from this region. And uh, the winner, well, will go through and play in the Confederations Cup. Let's go through the groups and have a little chat about your thoughts and mine. And at the end of each group, we'll put our arms <clears throat> on the line and, uh, and make our predictions. For group one, firstly, Tahiti. Now, for me, I, I, I flew on the plane in with them into Honiara. Um, it took them two minutes to get through customs and an hour to get past our uh, main man, Olivier, who kissed them on both cheeks, every side of them. But a very exciting side and probably, in my mind, the favourite for this group. Well, look, first of all, it's a French way to uh, uh, greet each other like that. Um, in terms of the group, I think that uh, Tahiti, you've got a, a solid chance. A lot of the players, seven or eight of them, are involved with the Tafana club. Tafana had a very successful uh, O-League campaign this season. They missed out on uh, going to the Club World Cup, losing to Auckland City and they make up the bulk of the squad. Uh, the coach, Eddie Yetta, also very experienced, and I, I think that they could be favourites to uh, top group, Group A. Well, we managed to catch up with um, reserve goalkeeper, Mikel Rush. Ah, ben oui, c'est un bel accueil. On a un peu un aperçu de la culture salomonaise, donc c'est vraiment, vraiment super sympa. Ça nous aide à nous remettre de notre voyage un peu long, un peu fastidieux. Donc c'est un grand plaisir d'être là et puis de se participer à ce bel événement qu'est l'OFC Nations Cup. Et la compète commence bientôt. Et la compète, on est déjà dedans. On est déjà dedans, donc on n'a pas de temps à perdre, donc on y va tout de suite. Quoi. Well, that was uh, Tahiti, one of the favorites for this group. Interesting, three French-speaking nations in this group, all massive rivals, but none more of a rival for Tahiti than New Caledonia. Exactly, and uh, New Caledonia have been one of the most consistent sides in, in the Oceania region over the last five or six years. Uh, they've got two South Pacific Games football titles behind them, and uh, recently they've had a change of coach. Alain Moison has come in. Uh, the retirement of Pierre Wajoka, who's been a talisman for New Caledonian football for a number of years, he, he's no longer part of the squad. So while you might think that New Caledonia can go on and repeat the success they've had in the past, I think the transition is, is going to be a problem. For and here we have an interview with Olivier de Canango, who is not only the captain of New Caledonia, but also the CEO of the Caledonian Football Association. Not much chance of him getting dropped then. La Nouvelle-Calédonie arrive avec euh, cette attention de figurer en demi-finale, donc euh, d'être dans les deux premiers de la, de la poule, qui, euh, qui nous qualifiera pour le stage 3 de la, des éliminateurs de la Coupe du Monde. L'équipe est, euh, est sereine, on vient avec euh, ce qu'on sait faire, avec notre football, donc euh, à partir de là, euh, on est, on est confiant et puis et on verra ce qui, va, ce qui va se passer tout le long de, de ce tournoi. Another team three that we're going to talk about in that group, in Group A, Samoa. Now, Samoa qualified for this tournament. They hosted the stage one of the, of the qualifications. Bizarrely, they're ranked high, the second highest, I think, just behind New Zealand in the FIFA rankings, but vast underdogs. Absolutely, and, uh, you know, probably one of the, the issues they've got is that they played these games so long ago. It was a, a great period of time uh, since they last played. They've lost a few players, uh, the, the camp is uh, struggling to get some cohesion and they had a name player in Chris Cahill, brother of Tim Cahill who was part of uh, their World Cup qualifying campaign uh, five years ago, he's now gone so whether or not they can pull together uh, some quality to, to affect uh, the outcome of this group. Now Vanuatu, Vanuatu, what do you know about Vanuatu? Well Vanuatu have uh, got a commitment to playing exciting attacking football, uh, I think we'll see a side that will put out a 4-4-2 formation. They're committed to that formation and approach it at youth level. I see no reason why that would change here. Uh, and they've indeed brought in a number of players from their age group sides. Uh, Brian Keltak is a player in particular who springs to mind. He's had experience at the Wellington Phoenix under Ricky Herbert for a, a, a brief spell. Um, they've also got Jean Nako uh, Napropol, who scored against the All-Whites uh, the last time they met in uh, a World Cup qualifier. Now, another player who could... Uh, 
be a bit of an X factor is uh, Francois Sakama. Francois was involved in the Oceania uh, All Stars game against the LA Galaxy. He's, he's got a wonderful left peg. Whether or not he's uh, man managed to get his fitness up, we'll see. But uh, they're definite contenders for a top two finish. Well, you mentioned Brian Caltech. Let's have a word from the man himself. My favourite sport in school and outside the field is like soccer. So I, I then got into the first intake of uh, academy, Fan Watu Academy. So I really enjoyed. It. Oh, I just thank, just thank God for this opportunity and this talent which just gave me. And I wish all our teammates and all my my friends would be happy if we could win this tournament. So I'm going to put the squeeze on you now, Gordon. Sure. The two teams that are going to go through. I'm going to pick Tahiti, and uh, I'm going to say New Caledonia based on, on their experience. Well, this, we can't start an England-Scotland argument already then, can we? Because I'm going to go for the same two. Let's move on now to Group B. First, the, the hosts. and I, The first time, you've been here before a few yeah. times, haven't you? This is the first time I've been here. This place, the passion for the game, the friendliness of the people. I can't wait to see the stadium full of 25,000 people when the Solomon Islands play. They are a side on the improve. Absolutely, and uh, again, like Vanuatu, they've got a commitment to getting the ball down and playing, and uh, Benjamin Tatori and uh, Henry Frodo are going to be key to that, but they've got quality all across the park. I mean, uh, James Narker is another player who uh, New Zealand viewers will be familiar with. Uh, he played for Kossa in, in their O-League final against uh, Waitakere United four years ago. He's a type of player who can drift in and out of games and then pop up, score a goal, lay a goal on for somebody else. The pressure on these players though to produce that form is going to be the key thing here. Um, the demand of this nation to see their country win this tournament is huge, absolutely huge. Four years ago they underdelivered. These players aren't young anymore and the expectation will be that they can come here and, and and they can take it out. Well, we spoke about the French influence in the other group. There were three French-speaking nations in there, but there's also a French influence in this group in the Solomon Islands. The coach, Laurent Papillon. Did you realise that Papillon is French for butterfly? Now, you remember the old saying, floats like a butterfly, stings like a bee? <laughs> well, let's find out from Laurent whether his team are going to sting like a bee. Uh, this player in this country are very, very good players, and they can be ambitious for this tournament. We are at home. We have uh, 18,000 people who will follow us each game and we can count uh, with the uh, support of the, all the population here. So we, we had an opportunity and I hope we can take this opportunity to win something this year and to, to continue for the, the last round, uh, round three uh, for the preparing of the Group B again, the next team, Papua New Guinea. Now, we've, we've been calling this the group of death. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that the other group is an easy one. Papua New Guinea, they've got a population of 7 million. They've got the potential to really do the business. What, are you, what have you seen of them so far and what do you reckon are their chances in this tournament? Well, look, uh, for me, Frank Farina, the coach, is the key, key person here. He's got this team tactically organised, they're disciplined, they work hard for him, they believe in his philosophies. Speaking to the players prior to arriving in the Solomon Islands, this is the, uh, the feeling that I get from them. Now, a lot of them have got international experience now. Four years ago they didn't have it. Um, they've been to the Club World Cup with Hikari, a bulk of the players. Uh, Andrew Leipani is an important feature at, at the back. They've got Raymond Ganemba and then the key midfield man will be David Mutter, who can spray passes all over the park. He's got good experience playing in the uh, State League in, in Queensland. So although they might not be favourites to emerge from the group, they will play a significant role in determining who will. Let's go and get a sort of administrative view on Papua New Guinea football from the Vice President, Jean Capinato. I, I feel very excited. I think it is uh, something that uh, every country in the Oceania is looking forward for. Uh, Papua New Guinea missed out probably uh, six, eight years ago. We did not participate. I think this is something very exciting for me as the head of delegation with the whole team and Papua New Guinea. So I'm very excited to be here with the rest of the team for this Nations Cup. Now the third team we're going to discuss in Group B, Fiji. Fiji, the perennial underachievers. We keep thinking they're going to go and take over the world, or this particularly Oceania. Is this their time? 
Well, it's going to be difficult for them. I think the weight of expectation on Fiji from the Fijian fans is always huge. You, you just need to see how their domestic competition runs and, and the parochial support that they get at clubs like Bar and Lautoka and Lombasa. Can this Fiji team live with that? It's going to be difficult to say. A lot's going to depend on the form of Roy Krishna. Roy obviously had one or two injury problems toward the end of the ASB Premiership season. If he's right, they've got a chance. They've got a big chance. Well, they're going to play a reasonably attacking game. I saw them training yesterday. To me, it looked as if they're going to play 3-5-2, but an attacking 3-5-2, not the sort of, you know, the 5-3-2 masking itself as that. Roy Christner looked reasonably good, although the heat was taking a bit of a, a toll on him. I spoke to their um, assistant coach, Imdad Ali. How important is it for Fiji to win this tournament or is it just are you focusing first on getting into the top four to, for further World Cup qualification? Well, we want to take every game as it comes, firstly. And secondly, um, we know we are in a tough pool and um, uh, no predictions at the moment, but we will want to do uh, well as uh, what other teams will want to do. Final um, team in Group B, reigning champions, hot, hot favourites, uh, despite missing several of their key players, the All Whites. Absolutely, I think they uh, come into this tournament off the back of two exceptional results. Uh, the uh, draw with El Salvador and, and the victory over Honduras. I think if there were any doubts that any fans had back home that maybe coming to the Solomons might be a fraught uh, occasion for the All Whites, they can lay that to rest. Um, OK, so Winston Reid and, and Ryan Nelson haven't made the trip. But the players that have been drafted in have got a load of O-League experience as well. And maybe seven or eight years ago, you, you couldn't say that. New Zealand perhaps didn't have that depth and quality. Well, I caught up with uh, Adam McGeorge from the All Whites. How do you think you're going to go in this heat? Um, obviously, uh, all the medical staff and things have got a, got a few things in, um, in the pipelines, but it's going to be tough. Every, t every island that you come up to, it's hard to play, and yeah, I reckon I probably lost half a kg just, just juggling, so now nah, it's going to be tough, but I, I think we've got the, the processes in place to, to deal with it. OK, Gordon, I think this might be the only time that we have a difference as far as picking so far. Who are the two that are going to come out of Group B and also qualify for the next stage of World Cup qualifying? Well, I think for me, you can't go past New Zealand. That's, that's a definite, and I'm going to say the hosts, Solomon Islands. What a waste of time that is, because it's the same two. Excuse me, I can't work with him anymore. He keeps picking the same ones as me. So I think we're all agreed as far as that goes. Now, the one thing of interest, that interview that we did with Adam McGeorge was at a, uh, a little rural school, a very poor school up the road called White River. And Brian Turner, um, assistant coach, was there with us as well. And he's picked up a new fan and maybe a new member of the family. You're not thinking of going like Madonna and adopting one, are you? No, no, not really. But uh, look, seriously, I mean, I you, you come you come to this part of the world and you and you just see what little that they've got, and you can't help but sort of feel attached to them. And when you see them just walking around, you know, you, you just want to want to do something. That was just spontaneous. What I saw and gave that little boy a shirt. I, I just saw him standing by himself, and I thought, wouldn't it be nice for him to go home and take a shirt home and show his mum and dad? And that's all it was, you know. And he's made up, you know. It's made his day. So, I mean, that's that's a really nice thing. Well, that was our introduction to this magnificent tournament, the Association Nations Cup. Don't forget, the winner goes to the Confederation Cup in Brazil next year, representing Oceania. The top four teams will go through to Stage 3 of World Cup qualifying for Brazil 2014. You can watch every game live streaming on OceaniaFootball.com. It kicks off on Friday, 1st of June, the first games. Tahiti will be playing Samoa, followed by New Caledonia, Vanuatu. And on match day two, Saturday 2nd of June, it's New Zealand up against Fiji in the group of death, followed by Solomon Islands up against Papua New Guinea. We'll see you soon on oceaniafootball.com. <laughs>